it up now. He's got options. Might have time to have a shot. Tar Charlie hit. Oh, oh, that from Charlie Dixon. What can Petrarca do? The snap from Christian Petrarca is bouncing. Oh. It's gone through. Doesn't go for goal. De Koning can't reel it in. Dacos could do something really, really special. Hello, I'm Damien Barrett and welcome to Access All Areas brought to you by Sportsbet. With finals only a month away, the competition for the spots in the eight is now very fierce. Matthew Lloyd is here as always. Lotto, Collingwood stood up. Carlton didn't. Yeah, no doubt about that, Damo. They were brilliant late in the game, as they were against North Melbourne the week before. They, uh, The game was up for grabs. Carlton were eight points up at half-time, and it was all Collingwood after half-time. Uh, the last score, uh, quarter was four goals, four to no score. So just saw a pressure handball from Wiedering. Docky, he's spent there. He can't even chase Jaden Stevenson. They've started to bring a few players back into the team, like Stevenson mm. and Cox, who could be quite important come finals. And there's a little mix of experience and youth. Dacos thought, there. Yeah, Dacos. Isaac Quaynor here involved. He was super. I thought Grundy, who's been a little down, yep. I thought his last 40 minutes he overpowered the rucks of Pitnett and De Conning as well. So some good signs for the Pies. Took in three big men yesterday. Yeah. Is that something they'll do for the remainder of the year or is it horses for courses? Oh, I think it's horses for courses, but I thought Cox... Uh, outplayed Darcy Cameron yesterday. Cameron only had a few touches, mm. so I think he might hold his spot and Cameron may lose it by the end of the year. In the sporting vernacular, we often say you, we go to war with someone. Mm. I'd go to war with Taylor Adams on a footy field. Yeah. Oh, yeah, spot on. He's a heart and soul player and if it wasn't for Pendlebury, he'd be the captain of the Collingwood Football Club. And I just I wonder if he still could get that opportunity in his time at Collingwood. He is now fifth uh, in their coaches' votes, which is a, the award I really value that the coaches give. And... Just when the game was there, up for grabs again, they're down at this point. Uh, Taylor Adams was the one who got the ball going their way and it sort of, he had uh, 17 of his 23 possessions were contested possessions and yeah, he's just using the ball extremely well, much better in the latter part of his career. He's long been looked at as the, almost the fourth member of that midfield, mm. hasn't he? Behind Pendlebury, the, the man you, you mentioned, mm. Trelaw when he's mm. fit. Uh, side bottom has got the elevated yeah. uh, reputation now. But he's every, every bit as crucial yeah. as those three. I'm with you, Dame. I think he's becoming number one. You know, really? Pendlebury's silk, but I think he's become the most important player at Collingwood. Yep. Darcy Moore's uh, mm. also in that conversation for most important at Collingwood. Uh, the way he can read the play, and, and did so again when this game got reasonably tight at certain stages, was is next level, isn't it? Yeah, super by Collingwood and by Darcy Moore in the way their defence, they, they put so much pressure on, uh, their defence holds up, but this was poor from Carlton. And I think David Teague would be asking the question, did we change anything? Did we try anything different? Did we enter the inside 50 any different? They just kept doing the same thing over and over again, and that was why they had no scoring opportunities late yep. in the game. Nathan Buckley was, was full of praise for, for what happened there. It, it's given the Pies a, a real shot at yeah. having an impact in September. The press conference at which he spoke post-match, it, it was wrapped up, Lotto, and then he volunteered this. Oh, can I, I just say something? I know there was an article in the paper the other day. I don't want to make it all about me, but about emptiness. I just, I just want to put on record that my life is very far from empty. Like, I don't have a flag, but I'll be working towards it. Um, but it, it's not going to uh, define me, whether I get it or not. Um, my life is very full. I'm very fortunate. I had a lot of love and got a great club and great group of boys and I'm looking forward to whatever the next couple of months brings. Now, he's chosen to put that mm. on the agenda, and he spoke with real pride and emotion, didn't he? His journey in the AFL world has been 28 mm. years in the making, and it hasn't got a premiership. Yeah. He's gone so close on, on numerous occasions. Your take on, on him yeah. volunteering that conversation the way he did? I fully understand that it won't define him, because Nathan can put his head on the pillow every night and say, I could not have done any more as a player and as a coach to get that premiership. He's talking about his family. He's more important than anything. Yeah. Uh, but what I will say is I've, I've sat alongside Matthew Richardson and Gary Lyon at many grand final events and there's a hollow feeling in them that they can't talk about or experience what it's like to win a premiership. And for me, individual accolades, once you're done, mean nothing. It's only whether you've won a premiership or not. And I think for Dangerfield and a guy like Nathan Buckley, I hope one day they get to experience it. Do you not think he's changed the, the way he views that, though, and that he, he would be absolutely fulfilled I as know. a person if he, if he wasn't oh, to be successful? Oh. I mean, he, as you say, he's done everything he can. Mm. He won a Norm Smith medal in a losing grand final. Mm. He coached the team to uh, being in front of yeah. the grand final with 100 seconds to go yeah. in a season. 
there's just nothing like the feeling, though, mate. The, the euphoria when the siren goes. Mm. I, I'm not sure what it's like compared to coach or a player, but um, nothing like it, and that's pretty much what tops off your whole career. Yeah. yeah. It's put them back uh, nicely mm. into the eight, and, and they look as though they're going to stay there now. Mm. The Pies are up into six spot now with uh, eight and a half wins. Um, the team's just outside the eight, Lord. What do you see happening there? Yeah, Essendon have a horror run and a horror percentage there. The Dogs, I think their run, uh, that, that puts them out of it. So I think it's down to nine teams and I think St Kilda in that are the most vulnerable they've got a pretty tough run but St Kilda can beat Hawthorne in the next game they should make it so I think uh, yeah that's down to nine spots and the Giants have got their work cut out to get in there. Yep Suns play the North Melbourne Witches Hats yeah. uh, as the closing match of the, the weekend Lordo and they had 31 shots at goal Gold Coast. It was a 12-19 scoreline. It could have been 20 goals plus yeah. and it could have been a 100-point deficit. This this club, North Melbourne, right now is is as big a mess as Adelaide. Yeah. You're right. You're right. They are in, a, in this big a mess about where the future is for North Melbourne. And I thought Adelaide's performance via the Western Bulldogs was one of the worst I've seen for Witches Hats, but this was to, equal to that level and you don't expect that from North Melbourne. Um, this year they've been better than that and just seeing them run in and kick goals like that, you mm. saw, saw rock bottom at North Melbourne, the scenes of Reece Shaw after the game, head in hands, he, he didn't expect that from his team this year. At the start of the year, 2-0 and they were, they've now uh, gone 3-11, and so they've won one of their yeah. last... Uh, obviously, ten games, and that and that, and that win Crows. was yeah. against the Adelaide Crows, who, who sits beneath them without a win at all yeah. in, in two thousand. Damo, how's it got to this point? You've, you've obviously you know, spoken of North for a long, long time about mm. some of the decisions they made, both on and off the field. Yeah. How has it got to this point for North? I just think they were delusional mm. about where they were at when they made the decision on Brad Scott, which is their right to mm. make Lotto uh, round ten of, of last season. Um, they're worse off now mm. than they were then, and yet they spent the time between removing Brad Scott and basically a month ago mm. thinking they were. Not just a finals mm. chance, but a, a winning finals chance. It, it wasn't a list that was ever going to do that yeah. in a significant way and in a way for the future. So I think they actually need to have a proper mm. look. They say they've done a review, and, and I take them at their mm. word they did, but I think they need to do another review, yep. a proper one, yep. to, to work out exactly yep. where they're at. Look, the Suns have now got to mm. the five and a half wins of this season. Again, I don't know what to make of the game against North Melbourne, yep. but Interestingly enough, and, and, and a lot of good footy experts, Lotto, refer to percentage as mm. being a key barometer. They've had a good year. Uh, much, much better. This is the best and sustained uh, you know, football that I've seen. It's just nice to see them win a game because they've been close, but just not close enough in so many of them. But this, did you see the way um, Noah Anderson played yesterday? Day, King, mm. Raoul on the, on the bench. I thought the way Greenwood's come in and Brandon Ellis. They seem to have got it right on the field, and um, yeah, it's whatever happens from here. They've had yeah. a great season. The D's have uh, breathed genuine life into their campaign. Four wins out of the past five games. Uh, the most recent one came some with some some really dogged moments in a tense game against St Kilda. This was huge, and I thought Mitch Brown. I'm not sure whether he'll be on the list next year, but the courage he showed late in this game didn't have the biggest day, but three points in it. Then 30 seconds later, goes and does this. Gets up again after being that hit, and I just thought the desperation they showed. St Kilda, they won that. They were set, but Melbourne couldn't afford to lose this. And I heard we had Stephen May yesterday on the Sunday Footy Show, and he spoke about they had some pretty tough and confronting meetings during the week, and they played like it late in the game. So, you know, poor against the Dogs for a quarter. Uh, and there was a scathing review on Melbourne. Yeah. And since Glenn Bartlett's come out, it's been a pretty good five weeks for Melbourne. We, we like every other media outlet, has been singing the mm. praises on this program nearly every Monday about this man, Christian Petrarca. He elevated his game yet again, Lordo, from a, a goal-kicking sense yeah. on this game. Four goals of the eight for the, the match. And that takes his tally to 13 for the year. He could possibly you know, do even a little bit better than that strike rate when it's all said and done. But this man is, mm. is near Dustin Martin, yeah. isn't he? And you've been saying this for some weeks. The thing about him is he can do it, he can hurt you in so many ways. So I've seen him get 28 to 30 possessions, so he can hurt you through clearances. On the weekend, he hurt the Saints through his four goals. Four goals from a midfielder is absolutely massive. I could count on one hand players who can do that. Mm. Dusty can do it. I've seen Robbie Gray do it. Yep. But you can't say Patrick Cripps can do that. You know, no. Paddy Cripps has probably done it once in his career, twice maybe, but that was super from him uh, yesterday and he's catapulting Melbourne in the finals. Yeah. The combination down back in the, in the mm. key posts is starting to yeah. take shape, isn't it? They've now both got some good body of work behind them with, uh, with injuries in the past and, and I'm referring there to obviously Lever and May. You mentioned Mitch Brown earlier, but the, the, the Lever and May combo is working beautifully. Yeah, I think it's the best game of AFL football Stephen May's ever played. Uh, 22 disposals. 
Uh, nine marks, kept King to three disposals. And just on Levo, I think his last three weeks have been his best for the Melbourne Footy Club. He's starting to feel at home, feeling good within his body, and poor King in this sense. I had Brian Lake do that to me a few times where he was marking the ball that well. I didn't want the ball to come near me, and that's where it got to for Max King on the weekend. Yeah, it's good to see him actually getting yeah. through his problems too. Lotto, we just wanted to remind our viewers of the great work that Ronald McDonald House is doing to assist seriously sick and injured children and their families. The charity provides a home away from home for families of seriously ill children being treated at nearby hospitals. and. A number of AFL players visit Ronald McDonald House every year and get behind the cause. Unfortunately, they've had to cancel all of their balls and their fundraising events due to COVID-19. But we just want to let people know that they can still help and they can do so by volunteering at your local house or donating in a McDonald's restaurant. And to learn more, visit rmhc.org.au and please remember to mark November 14 in your diaries for McHappy Day. Yeah, Damo, Ronald McDonald House is one of the great charities that I've ever been involved with. Uh, the, you just walk into the hospital and you see the smile you can put on the face of the children and also the, the parents who do it just as tough as the yeah. kids is, is amazing. It's a phenomenal charity. Yeah, and there's yeah. so much support there for is, it from yeah. the AFL industry, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. Lotto, the, the Giants are just yeah. hanging in there, aren't they? they? They got a gritty win over the Dockers. Do you still think they can do something in this season? Oh, their best, their best, they can do something, but we don't see their best very often. So it's been a really scratchy year for them, but on the weekend, their point of difference was their ball movement. This is what they have to do. There's no point chipping the ball around half-back when you've got the star-studded forward line that they've got. They say Cameron played Jeremy with a smile on his face. No wonder he played with a smile on his face when they finally move the ball quickly and Jeremy can get on the end of it. So, so you notice the mind shift yeah. in, in play? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. They, they attacked the game a lot more. Why um, did it take until round 14? It was... It, yeah, I'm not sure why, Damon. They've had players come in and out, but that was their second highest score since round one. So they, they'll bring against Geelong in round one before mm. footy was shut down. That was the best they've played since then because they moved the ball and their pressure was a phenomenal. And Riccardi and Cameron kicked eight goals between them yep. because they gave them a chance. Yep. Let's take a, a look at the key premiership markets with Nathan Brown of Sportsbet. Yeah, thanks, Damo. Enjoy life up at the hub. There'll be so many people looking forward to you getting up there, but it's all about the premiership market. And I'll tell you what, the Tigers made a statement the other night, and again, they're the outright favourites for the first time in a while, and they're flying the Tigers. The Cats come from behind victory. They look the value still. And Port Adelaide just drifting. Even though they're on top of the ladder, not a lot of friends for Port Adelaide in the premiership market. Brownlow Middle, been a bit of a movement. Petrarca. Three votes. Lockie Neal still very short, but Petrarca definitely is coming. And Taylor Adams down the bottom there. Wait for the top five and top ten markets. We've got him marked much higher than what he is in the betting. And we've got a betting without Lockie Neal, if you like that. A little bit more value around Petrarca. Firmly believe he is second on the Brownlow medal at the moment. Jack Steele will be up there as well. Good luck if you're punning on any of this. Gamble responsibly and enjoy the hub demo. We're very glad to get away from that <laughs> man when I do get to that hub, Lotto. Hey, uh, Robbie Gray, thank you to Nathan Brown and Sportsbet. Robbie Gray is still as important to his team as any other individual is to his team in the AFL. Yeah, don't, but there have been a few games though, this year where I, I would have argued that because I thought, oh, is Gray you know, showing his age at times? But uh, he was... Yeah. Turn the clock back on the weekend. Just how clean he was. Just doesn't waste the disposal. He had 19 disposals and two goals in the first half. Ended up with 27 disposals, two goals and six tackles. And I just thought the chemistry between he and Charlie Dixon was, was really strong on the weekend. Yeah. It's just a nice reminder, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, as, as we get closer to finals, for Ken Hinckley to just say, hey, guys, if, if you think you can shut Robbie Gray mm. down as a, as a permanent forward, we'll just move him inside. Yeah, that's exactly right. And he's, I think with his seniority, he's playing around a lot of Rosie, Butters. Yep. A lot of youthful players can drift in and out of games. A fully fit Robbie Gray could be scary come finals. Now, the presence was back. Charlie Dixon was back. Uh, you wanted to highlight yeah. this, and it's an interesting argument. The, the, the power has got two young forwards in Todd Marshall and Mitch Georgiades. Mm. Dixon works better with one of them. Yeah, and that's Todd Marshall. And I just... Marshall didn't have a huge game on the weekend, but it's the way he plays. I think Georgiades is more your stay-at-home forward, whereas Marshall gets up the ground, takes out defenders with him, and makes it easier for Charlie Dixon. So time will tell come the business end, but they've got to buy now, Damo, yep. and Ken Hinckley has to decide, who do I go with? Can I play, can I put West off out, but then Big Laddams will probably come back in? And can I only play one of Marshall or Georgiades? And I think the way Marshall complements 
Uh, Big Charlie, I think he's the one he should go with. Yeah, OK. Mm. Interesting dilemma. Um, Gary Rowland's another intriguing mm. person who we, we talk about regularly, as others do. He, he was slow to get going, as his team was against the Bulldogs. But, again, you could mount the case that he was nearly as important mm. as any other cat that night. Some would say to me, never put Nick Natanui and Gary Rowan in the same sentence. But I'm going to here <laughs> in the fact that you cannot judge Gary Rowan on disposals yep. because of what he does here. I, me- I heard uh, Dangerfield say when he first got to Geelong. The pressure of Rowan is as good as I've ever seen. And his impact, he's one of those players, like a small forward, they drift in and out of games. But when he is on, he is on. And I think that uh, he's, he's been questionable in big games. But I think he's ready this year. He's ready as yep. he's ever been with the way he's playing. Tell me, is he is Geelong a better team with him as the second forward option alongside Hawkins than Radagalia? Yes. Yeah. I, okay. I think they've, sh- they've shown their hand. No and Jenkins, is that for every game or no is it horses for courses? No, nah, it's for every so game. So he's out for the year in your eyes? Out for the year in my eyes, yeah. yeah. I think they've got their settled forward line. A- Ablett will most likely come in for close. Yep. And then Salwood's got to come in for somebody. For Atkins, maybe. Yeah, maybe. And I just yeah. wonder if Jack Stephen, even... I know he's going a little bit better, yep. but uh, that's a decision Chris's got to have to make. OK. Mm. Joe Danaher rightfully got the, the headlines out of what Essendon did against Hawthorne in a big comeback. But uh, Andrew McGrath, Lord, a man you've got a lot of time yeah. for, was, was brilliant in the third quarter when this game had to be turned around. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to coach against uh, Andrew for a long period of time. Andrew was a captain of uh, Brighton Grammar, and he's got captaincy written all over him. So... They don't want to give it to him too early, but uh, I think he's the next captain of the Essendon Football Club. You see this energy here that he's showing. It it was similar to what the Giants did. Again, to the layman, Lord, why don't clubs play like this more often? And clubs that have this as their weapon. I think the Giants' weapon is run and carry, and the Essendon weapon is run and carry. So they can't go back to chipping it backwards and sideways. McGrath, Shield, Tip and Woody... Sad. They want to play that type of football and Rutten's got to unleash the handbrake and let them play that way for the rest of the year. Tigers beat the Eagles also mm. in round 14. Did you, did you make a lot out of that and, and do you judge the Eagles differently now? I do. I just think on neutral territory in Queensland, I'm going to back the Tigers in over the Eagles every day of the week. And every day of the week? Yeah, every yep. day of the week. So now the, the Eagles have to sweat on the Tigers losing to Geelong. Yep. Uh, in a few weeks' time to get back that top four spot. Yep. Saints have lost uh, mm. four games by less than a, a kick, Lord. Oh, they've tried a few things differently this year. They've uh, brought the, the heavy breathing pre-match into, mm. the, into the norm, <laughs> but they changed their ways at half-time. Yeah, eyebrows are being raised. What, do you want them <laughs> meditating? Do you want them doing the old rah-rah? We used to do this back in the under-10s, do you and I were warming up before we ran out, which is <laughs> What do you prefer? Favorite. You're old school, aren't you? Uh, I, I'd like the, the old school one. stuff, the yep. second one, yeah. Now, there's so many disadvantages about not having a crowd or big crowd at the football, Lord. Oh, including this one. Now, there's a, a gentleman in this crowd who, who knows where the microphones <laughs> are and is reminding BT, Brian Taylor, that he can be heard. Taylor keeping it alive and O'Connor almost stepping over the line with some sort of deliberate action about it. Can you hear everything we say? Yes, we can, sir. <laughs> Geez, I'd love to be the next, but I'd love to sit next to him on the microphone and just raz BT up all night. That would be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't cope with it. He would not cope. Hey, Lotto, thank you thanks, as always Dave, on Access Allures, and thanks for watching us. We'll be back next Monday.